Howdy, Immortalium here. Today I'm reviewing a manga classic called Tetera by, uh, what was her name? Kaiko Takemiya. Uh, if you don't know what this series is, well, first of all, it's a manga classic uh, written between 1977 and 1980. It's won lots of awards as well as uh, garnered two adaptations, if you need to hear. It won the first Seon Award for Manga, which is a science fiction award in Japan. It won the Shogakukan Award for Shonen, which is a massive award. It got a 1980 movie, but most impressively, I think, this, is, this series, written in 1977 to 1980, got a 2007 TV series of 26 episodes called Toward the Terror, which I think is very impressive. So, okay, we get that it's respected. The question becomes, is it good? It's good. Is it great? Not really. But I'll go into more detail. So what's the plot? Uh, basically, it's set during um, what one calls S an SD era, basically. Um, it's, it's superior domination era. Basically, children are separated from their parents. They're like not raised with their parents. They're raised in foster parents. Their memories are then removed to, and then brought back to Earth. The Earth has basically descended into hell. Basically, it's just barren rock with you know horrible weather conditions and everything. But there's the superior domination order is repairing Earth and making it more habitable, along with breeding humans to, um, you know, repair Earth and become, you know, a great power once again. Um, the Superior Domination Order is basically a group of computers. So in this story, you know, humans are controlled by computers. Basically, that's what the plot is, along with um, there's um, a group of humans, a type of human that has developed called Mu. And the Mu are a people who have, you know, telekinetic abilities. They're able to, um, you know, project thoughts and, you know, psychological attacks into people. Um, as well as be able to um, interact with, um, you know, various aspects of the universe, etc, etc. Um, so, and they're... Um, obviously hated by the humans because the humans you know view them uh, as kind of well like they say that the Mu are a you know lesser species but in reality they're jealous of their power and view them as a greater species that might possibly take over humanity and we have a boy who's rescued from one of these um, one of these uh, raising planets, basically, where, um, you know, the children are raised and then brought to Terra later after their memories are removed, called Jomi Marcus Shin. And he, you know, becomes the leader of the Mu. It's actually quite interesting because um, the previous leader of the Mu sends all of his thoughts and ideals and all that into Jomi Marcus Shin's head. So Jomi Marcus Shin is now like an amalgamation of this previous boy and of the new leader's personality. So... That's quite interesting. And it's very easy to see why this manga was so loved. Because, you know, it's really... First of all, this series actually makes me think a lot of Battlestar Galactica. The interesting thing about Battlestar Galactica, the original series, you know, the cheesy... It was made in 1979, which was two years after this series. So it began, although before it ended. And this series actually really reminds me of um, Battlestar Galactica because, you know, it's it's about, you know, a people who have, um, you know, are being chased by an enemy. Their aim, their target is Earth. They're going towards it. They're dealing with all these kind of philosophical questions as they're heading towards Earth, etc, etc. And it's actually, the story itself is actually very good. I like the story a lot. And in particular, I like the art a lot, if um, I might just show you. It's an interesting art style. Uh, like, basically, the way I would describe it is like it's like a combination of old shoujo manga art style and tezuka, in that it's, it can be very detailed, particularly hair-wise. But then, um, when, well, you know, it can also get quite cartoony, so let me just see if I can get you some good-looking... Um, like, 
you have this kind of thing here, which is very lovely looking artwork, I think, particularly if, when you consider it was 1970s. Um, the space shots are like absolutely just beautiful looking. Um, I think I'm near the beginning. You get some really nice space shots. Um, like for example, the ship here is just gorgeous looking. And actually the panel arrangement as well is fantastic. Um, I mean, um, there was something that I only finished the series yesterday, so there was a, um, a scene near the end of the story um, which actually really stood out to me in its panel arrangement. It was, um, where was it now? Where it basically, a mountain became part of the earth, which, uh, no, not part of the earth, what am I saying? The mountain became a part of something else. Just give me one moment. Yeah, part of the sp of part of space. So it's actually quite fascinating. Um, uh, it's so you have the mount the mountain there, then going up the mountain, and then it actually turns into space as you go down there, which I think is actually an amazing kind of you know way of arranging panel. And like you see that kind of panel arrangements throughout um, all of Tatera. Like there's bits where like the characters cape becomes like the next room or something like that. And I think that that's really original. It's really creative. It gets one more engaged in the story. It's um, it's very arty, but or like a beautiful looking artwork. And from a visual perspective, this is a gorgeous looking series. Uh, the story, as I said, is very good. And I love the ideas that it presents, you know, like, you know, humanity controlled by, um, you know, computers, that the Mu are like a separate species that have been developed somehow from, you know, human genetic code and that, you know, humans hate them because of the fact that they're superior, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The major issue I have, and this is basically one major issue I have with this series, and it's a major issue, is the characters. It's not that the characters are bad. Um, they're not bad. You know, there's none of the characters that you look at and you go, oh my god, I can't stand them. It just, you just don't get too engaged with them. This series moves at a quick pace. It's more about the story than the characters. The characters are there in order to progress the story and to, you know, make, create the ideas. And while, like, none of them are particularly memorable, none of them are, you know, standouts. You know, some of them are interesting, but like, you know, they're, they're just interesting mainly for the ideas they have rather than, you know, the characters themselves, personality-wise. That's something that I thought weakened the series, and it would have been nicer if um, Kaiko Takemiya had, um, you know, you know, I, I don't know, given just a few scenes to, you know, develop the characters, get let us know what their personality was like, etc., etc. It's kind of annoying in that regard, in that we don't see, really get to know these characters, and we don't get to connect with these characters, but. For the beautiful artwork and for the um, you know great ideas that it presents, it's still a recommended series. Um, two things to talk about before uh, we finish up. First of all, is Vertical's treatment of this series. Now, Vertical are one of my favorite manga publishers. They pub basically the only series I had gotten before Terra from Vertical were Tezuka series, which, you know, beautiful, you know, translations, paper quality, etc., etc., as well, covers. And I'd also read uh, the first Gundam manga, um, first volume, which, you know, beautiful, beautiful hardcover thing and gloss pages. So, like, you know, they their presentations are generally amazing. Tatera. It's not so bad that it'll interrupt your own um, reading experience, but I do have to point out some issues. First of all, the covers. These are made by a guy called Chip Kid, and the kid being 2Ds, if you want to look them up. And they're basically, they're just shots from the um, manga itself. Um, so if you look at that, if at some point you're going to find it within the volume. And I just can't find that kind of distracting. I don't think it's like the most appealing cover. I would have preferred if they used like maybe one of the covers that the Japanese versions used. Um, the other thing I have to point out is, okay, you get, you get these things in here called parts. So you have part one. But 
they're not really organized into chapters. Now, I find that really annoying because, um, you know, it, when I read, like I was reading this at night and I love to end on a chapter, you know, so like if I'm reading, say, Naruto or, you know, Buddha or something like that, I'm, I'm going to stop at the end of a chapter and not within a chapter. In this series, it, like, okay, you have parts, but the parts are one and few between. Um, I didn't really notice many parts overall. It's, um, there's, like, it's, it's hard to tell where a chapter ended and where a chapter began. And it just made it a slightly uncomfortable reading experience. Now, it wouldn't have bothered me if I read this all in one go, which I guess, you know, I guess they kind of expected you to. But I, I, I was, you know, reading this and then, you know, stopping after, after a while, you know, going to bed then. And it just kind of made it uncomfortable. Because so I would have liked it if it had been organized into chapters. Um, second thing as well, like, uh, well, I guess the third thing actually, is the paper. Now, the paper quality itself is actually very good. And it's very nice. It has a great texture. It, you know, very nice whites. But it's a little thin. And what that means is that you get a little bit of page bleeding. Just a hint. I'm not sure if you can see it here, for instance, at the top. You can see a slight bit on the next page. It's um, a little distracting. Not overly distracting, but just a little distracting. It just makes it a little... So, basically, vertical. You could have done a lot better on this release. You could have organized the chapters for a more comfortable reading experience. You could have made the pages just slightly thicker, just ever so slightly thicker, to remove page bleeding and, you know, Co the covers, you know, you could have just gotten the original Japanese covers. I would prefer that. And um, final thing as well to point out about this series, um, you may have noticed if you use Anime News Network recently that they have an article now, um, you know, Manga Spotlight on Tatera. The reason that they brought it up and the reason I was reading this series is because of the news that this series is going out of print. Um, at, I think January 1st, 2014, Vertical will stop printing this and actually, according to their contract, will have to destroy any remaining stock of the Terra that they have. Which is a bit extreme, I think, but, you know, that's what can happen. Now, stores will be permitted to sell the remaining stock that they have of the Terra, if they have the Terra, but they won't be able to order any more of it. Their, you know, Vertical isn't going to be able to sell them out cheap or anything. So, if you want to get this series of Tatera, you're going to need to get it soon, or else you'll have to rely on luck in order to find, you know, find Tatera at a con or something like that. So, overall, with Tatera, do I recommend it? I do, because it's an important part of manga history. It presents a lot of interesting ideas and is a beautiful looking, you know, work. Uh, you know, just gorgeous artwork. But... The Vertical's treatment could have been much better, and the characters aren't particularly memorable or interesting. You know, they they serve their purpose, and they're not bad, you know, but, you know, it, it, a story in which, you know, the characters aren't particularly interesting is gonna get a good few points marked off. So, yeah. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.